Good morning to everyone. I'd like to greet you a pleasant Wednesday today. And uh, we thank the Lord for His goodness to all of us. Um, we are again uh, facing this new quarantine, this um, MECQ. And um, we don't know really what will happen next to um, all of us. But we know for sure that the Lord is there and uh, He is helping us going through uh, this pandemic. Our lesson for today is about uh, Nahum and um, what we will be studying about what he was uh, preaching and uh, he was prophesying to the people of Assyria. It's because of what they have done to uh, the nation of Israel. So uh, let's um, read the scripture today. It is found in Nahum chapter 1. I think it is 1 to 7. Okay. And um, uh, we will be studying this uh, prophecy of uh, Nahum. And um, we will be giving you some insights in this um, uh, scripture. So, Nahum. Okay. A prophecy concerning Nedava, the book of the vision of Nahum the Elkoshite. The Lord is jealous and avenging God. The Lord takes vengeance and is filled with wrath. The Lord takes vengeance in his foes and vents his wrath against his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger but great in power. The Lord will not leave the guilty and punished. His way is in the whirlwind and the storm, and, the, and clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebukes the sea and dries it up, and makes all the rivers run dry. Bashan and Carmel wither, and the blossom of Lebanon fade. The mountains quake before him, and the hills melt away. The earth trembles at his peace, presence the world and all who live in it. Who can withstand his in indignation? Who can endure his fierce anger? His wrath is poured out like fire. The rocks are shattered before him. The Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. And that is Nahum. And uh, I'll be... Leading you to uh, the background of this book, Nahum, uh, so that we could really understand what is really happening here in this book. But before that, we would like to um, ask the Lord's guidance to all of us, we pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. Thank you for giving us this time and help us, Lord, to understand your word. And this would be uh, a consolation to us, a comfort to us, and that even things are not ha happening the way we think but you are there you are always near for us to call you and that you would help us bless your servant today and give him wisdom to uh, give your word to your people today in Jesus name we pray amen so the book of Nahum and it said in verse 1 it says um, the prophecy concerning Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum, the Elkoshite. Before that, um, a lot of people have experienced um, disaster. A lot of, ex of people also experience, and maybe they have uh, taken it into the consideration that because dis disasters are coming, this is from an angry God. Okay? And um, there are a lot of people also that says, oh, God is love and he cannot be a person who will get angry. But both of them are present in the book that we'll be uh, studying this morning. And I pray that um, we, we see the character of God. We not, we not only see him as a loving God, a merciful God, a gracious God, but also he is also a person who gets angry. 
Okay? So, what are the reason why God gets angry? And this um, scripture this morning, Nahum is is prophesying concerning the um, the, the the nation of Assyria or Nineveh. Okay, we could see that in Nineveh there, and Nineveh is maybe that is the capital of Assyria before. Okay, and the theme of this um, of this book is concerning. The con the consolation, okay, um, or or the destruction, the destruction of Assyria. Um, the name Nahum is is in Hebrew Nakum, meaning consolation. So there is a consolation, um, but there is a destruction of the North Kingdom of Israel because Assyria took them okay so Nahum prophesied the destruction of Assyria in 713 BC or 713 BC after the Assyrian destroyed the northern kingdom of Israel so after the Assyria destroyed the kingdom of Israel the northern kingdom of Israel Nahum prophesied against them that God also will destroy them now we um, See here, one of the characteristics of God is the Lord is jealous and avenging God, avenging God. Okay, so we could also say that God is an avenger. Before this avenger film came uh, to us, the Lord is already called the avenger. Why is it that he is called the avenger? Because he avenges his enemies because those enemies have trampled um, his beloved people, Israel. Or maybe those people who are being loved by God, the Lord will bring uh, destruction to the people, those who hate the children of God. So, God takes vengeance on his adversaries. And this is um, in verse 2. The Lord takes vengeance and feel the wrath. Um, the Lord is jealous and avenging God. The Lord takes vengeance and is filled with wrath. The Lord takes vengeance on his foes and vents his wrath against his enemies. So we see here that uh, God is the avenger. Okay. So God takes vengeance on his adversaries. He will judge the nation who wants to destroy the people of God. God will judge those nations who wants to destroy the people of God, especially the Israel, the people whom he loved. In the book of uh, Exodus, we see there that God expresses his love to Israel. He will destroy them because of their wickedness and cruelty. Okay, um, Because the Assyrians, uh, that is represented by Nineveh, God will destroy them because they have destroyed the people of God there in Northern Kingdom. That is that is the northern part of Israel. And Nahum is uh, the name of uh, Nahum. I said before that his name means consolation. It was just right, okay, to um, the people of Israel or the Northern Kingdom. Due to the devastation that the Assyrian has given them, okay, they and Nahum is giving hope to the people of God because God will avenge them, avenge, avenge the enemies because what of what they have done to as to uh, to the Northern Kingdom. Okay, so here in this uh, scripture, um, uh, three chapters. We could see here that God will destroy and and avenge and destroy the Assyrians because uh, of what they have done to Israel. Why is it that God is angry to Assyrians? Number one, they have no mercy with all their strength. They just killed, they destroy. And they plunder. If you would see that in uh, 
chapter 2 of um, Nahum, um, I think we could go to the Nahum chapter 2, and he said the fall of Nineveh, or the fall of Nineveh, and it says that an attacker advances against you, Nineveh, guard the fortress, what's the road, brace yourselves, marshal all your strength. The Lord will restore the splendor of Jacob, like the splendor of Israel, through though destroyers have led them waste and have ruined their lives. The shields of the soldiers are red, the warriors are clad in scarlet, the metal of the chariots flashes on the day that they were made ready, the spears of juniper are banished. The chariots storm through the streets, rushing back and forth through the squares. They look like flaming torches, they dart about like lightning. So that was the description of the Assyrians when they uh, plunder and killed the northern kingdom of Israel. So the Lord is angry with them because they have no mercy. With all their strength, they just killed and destroyed and plunder the, the northern kingdom of Israel. Number two, why is it that God is angry with them? Uh, they are their greed and... Uh, Lustful pleasure caused them to be corrupt in all their dealings with the nation of Israel. Dito po sa my uh, chapter 3. Okay? Here in chapter 3. Woe to the city of blood, full of lies, full of plunder, never without victims, the crack of whips, the clatter of wheels. Galloping horses and jolting chariots, charging cavalry, flashing swords and glittering spears, many casualties, piles of dead, bodies without number, people stumbling over the corpses, all because of the wanton lust of a prostitute alluring the mistress of sorcerers, sorceries who enslaved the nation by her prostitution and the peoples by her witchcraft. The Lord said, I am against you, declares the Almighty, Lord Almighty. I will lift your skirts over you to your face. I will show the nations your nakedness and the kingdoms of your shame. So this is the uh, reason, why, one of the reasons that God was angry with Nineveh or God was angry with the Assyrians because they are full of greed and lustful pleasure, caused them to be corrupt in all their dealings with the nation of Israel. So, um, in many cases, um, the Lord in the Old Testament expresses His um, anger to the people who do not follow God. Okay, so when, when you ask the question, does God ever get angry? Because there are some false teachers today that they would say, Oh, God will not get angry. He is full of love. He's full of mercy. He's full of grace. He's full of goodness and everything. But you know what? The, the, the verses that we have read this morning are filled with, with truths that, you know, God gets angry. Okay? God gets angry. So... Uh, we will see some of the verses here this morning that it signifies that God really gets angry. And um, we could see that also in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 27. Isaiah 30, verse 27. And uh, we will read in, in the New International Version. Okay. Chapter 30, verse 27. Let's go to verse uh, 27 here. And it says, um, See, the name of the Lord comes up uh, from afar with burning anger and dense clouds of smoke. His lips are full of wrath and his tongue is a consuming fire. His breath is like a rushing torrent rising up to the, ne to the neck. He shakes the nation in the sea of destruction, he places in his jaws of the peoples a bit that leads them astray. And you will sing on the night to celebrate a holy festival. Your hearts will rejoice as when people playing pipes go up to the mountains of the Lord. 
to the rock of Israel. Now, here in verse 27 to 28, he is the God who gets angry. Okay? So, are you, um, am I afraid when God gets angry? In our families, when you see the character of your father that when he gets angry, all people just fled away. Maybe this is how the Lord gets angry with those people who do not um, fulfill His commands. Okay, so God gets angry at sin. God gets angry at sin. Oh, but of course, He gets angry also to the person who commits sin. Until that person comes to God, humble himself, ask for forgiveness, and accept his love, then he would be a person who will be loved by God for eternity. And so, do not be confused. God, God gets angry. He is portrayed in a variety of images that expresses angry at sin. Okay? So, does God ever get angry? Or gets angry? Yes. He gets angry with sin. And he gets angry with a person who commits sin. Okay, number two. God shows his anger towards individuals. So, not only to the nation, that he gets angry to the nation like Assyria, he gets angry also to the individuals. And we will see here in Psalm 88 verse 16. Okay? Um, I think this is the sons of Korah who, uh, who wrote this um, psalm. And he says, Your wrath has swept over me. And that is too personal, right? Your terrors have destroyed me. So God, God gets angry towards an individual. Now, don't tell me that uh, God only gets angry to a particular people particular nation but he gets angry also to the individual person because of what he is doing against God okay number three he is also angry towards Israel okay he expressed his ang anger towards Israel and uh, we um, we could uh, we could just imagine how God was angry to uh, the, Is the Israelites in Exodus chapter 32. In uh, verse 9 to 10, he was angry with Israel. And uh, a lot of verses in the scripture that tells us that he was angry also with Israel. And also in Ezekiel 25:17, he is angry towards other nations. I will not go to that verses anymore. But if you have time, you go to Exodus chapter 32, he was angry with Israel. Go to Ezekiel chapter 25 verse 17. He was angry toward other nations. No. When the Lord says in the Bible nations, it is outside of Israel. Those nations who are being ruled by bad kings and uh, spiritual entities like bad angels. Okay? But you know what? When we go back to um, Nahum chapter... Uh, one, it tells us <clears throat> that in verse 3, although he is angry, the Lord is also slow to anger, but great in power. So, um, right now, maybe uh, he is not angry just in a spur of a moment, but uh, sometimes the, ang the anger of the Lord piles up. From a little one to the bigger one to the biggest one. And so it piles, but he is very slow to anger. And one of the re one of the meanings also slow to anger is the Lord is slowly to be angry. He is not uh, judging you right away. But he is slow and he is giving us time to go back to him. Okay? He is rich in mercy. Okay, in Jeremiah chapter 18, verse um, 7 to 10. Um, let me see if I have a... Uh, uh, Jeremiah 18, 7, 18, 7. And it says here, okay, 
Uh, you you read that if at any time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be uprooted or torn down and destroyed, and if that nation I warned repents of its evil, then I will relent and not afflict on it the disaster I had planned. And if conditional, no conditional, and if at another time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be built up and planted. And if it does evil in my sight and does not obey me, then I will reconsider the good I had intended to do for it. So the Lord here is like, have a feeling like a man. Oh, of course, he, we are in, uh, in God's image. We are made in God's image. So whatever feelings that God has, we have. Okay? So it says the, uh, to the nation that... To be uprooted, okay, or the nation or kingdoms to be judged by the Lord. He will torn down and destroy it. But if, this is conditional, if that nation, I warn, repents of its evil, then I will relent and not inflict on it the disaster I had planned. So, the Lord God is already uh, have reasons why he would uproot or destroy the nation. Because they have done evil in the sight of the Lord. But His mercy is there when you relent. When that, that, that nation um, will repent of its evils, then the Lord will not afflict them anymore. And the plan of the Lord to destroy them will uh, not be pursued. But He said in verse 9, and if at another time I announce that a nation or a kingdom to be built and up, build up and planted, no. If the Lord God has announced that that nation will be built up and uh, planted and it will flourish, and if it does evil, again, no. And if conditional, and if it does evil in my sight and does not obey me, then I will reconsider the good I had intended to do for it. Okay? You cannot play with God. I cannot play with God. Okay? The Lord God is our ruler. And He rules. And He got these um, commands and, uh, and laws. Okay? And you are given a will, a free will to do, obey, or not to obey. If you obey, if I obey, then the Lord God will bless me. If I do not obey, then the Lord will destroy me. The Lord will punish me. I have bitter consequences if I do not obey God's word. So in Nahum 1.3, although God is destroying, we will destroy the Nenevi or the Assyrians because of what they have done to the people of God. But he says, the Lord is slow to anger. And this is the comfort of those people who are um, uh, doing evil because the Lord is waiting for them to come back. The Lord is waiting for them to go back to the Lord and say, Lord, I humble myself before you. I have sinned. Please forgive me. And the Lord will bless you. And also in Nahum 1.7, this is a good, uh, a good uh, verse. The Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. So Nahum was giving this this verses to uh, this word to the people of Israel that even though the Assyrians has plan plundered you, had destroyed you, but the Lord is good. He is always good, all the time, and He is our refuge in times of pandemic. <laughs> he is uh, He is our Lord, who is our uh, uh, refuge during these times. Okay, the Lord is good. The Lord shows His goodness. Number one. He is a refuge in times of trouble. Number two, He cares for those who trust in Him. Okay? You can see that verse. The Lord is good and He shows His goodness by caring for us. He is our refuge in times of trouble and He cares for those who trust in Him. He cares for those who trust in Him. So this is a good verse. No, he, This is a good verse to remember. This is a good verse to remember. He said, the Lord is good. A refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in Him. 
So God is angry to those people who are doing evil. And he was angry with the Assyrians because of their offenses before the Lord. And remember Jonah. Okay, remember Jonah. That the Lord said, Oh, go to uh, Nineveh and preach to them that God will judge them. If they will not repent, then I will destroy them. And Jonah don't want to go to Nineveh or to the Assyria because they are the enemies of Israel. But the Lord said, Go, go, go. And Jonah said, oh, I will not go. Instead, I will go to Europe. <laughs> and when he was on the boat there, uh, there was a big storm and he was thrown. Jonah was thrown into the sea and he was caught by, by a big fish. And that big fish um, took him to the land again so that Jonah would go to Assyria. That is the northern part, eastern, northeastern part of uh, Israel. And he wanted to go to the western part, okay? But the Lord said, okay, go, go, go. And Jonah preached the word there in Nineveh. And the Nineveh people um, relented and they have um, asked for forgiveness of God. And God did not destroy them, okay? So God is angry towards you and me also if I do not do what God God's will in my life. So if we go to other persons for help, go to other source of salvation. There is no other source of salvation. That's why God is a very jealous God. Uh, you could see that again in uh, in Nahum uh, one. Uh, okay, uh, verse two. Nahum one two. It says, "The Lord is a jealous and avenging God." There is no way. And there is no other person who can give us salvation, only God. So if you go to another person for salvation, then God, God is angry because you are not going to the right person. So um, because we need salvation, we need to go to God. But if you don't want to go to God, then He is angry and He will punish us. The Lord is good. He is a refuge in times of trouble. Okay? So in times of persecutions, in times of pandemic, in, in, in times of a lot of cares and worries in this life, you go to this verse again, okay? You go to that verse. The Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble, and He cares for those who trust in Him. Okay? Can you memorize that? The Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble, and He cares for me. I will trust in Him. Put your name there in uh, those who trust in Him. Okay? So the Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in Him. So may the Lord bless you today. And uh, if you have some troubles in your life, go to God. Do not make or be a, be a, do a habitual sin of doing sin. Um, doing a habit of doing what is not right before the Lord because God will get angry with you. But you know what? When you come to Him, then He loves you so much that you would, He likes you to come to Him and say to Him, Lord, I, I please forgive me. I'd like to go back to you and humble myself. I will love you because you love me first of all. May God the Lord bless you today and keep safe. Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the moment that you have given us this morning. Help us and keep us safe in this situation. And we know that you are our refuge. You are our refuge and strength in times of this pandemic, in times of this trouble. You are our refuge and strength. We shall, have, we shall go to you. We will go to you. Ask for help. Ask for forgiveness. And we will commit to you that we love you with all of our hearts. You will bless us. Help our um, uh, friends, office mates, keep them safe. Um, heal them, Lord, from their sickness, from this disease. We also like to pray for Captain Jang. Continue, Lord, to help him in uh, his healing period. In Jesus' name, we pray all these things. Amen. Good day for now, and God bless you all.